Hi, you're watching On The Mark with Mark. We're continuing on with the kitchen cabinet upgrades. And uh, as I said in episode three, we are turning our attention to the lower cabinets on the other wall of the kitchen. And here is the starting picture. This is kind of a before picture of the existing condition. And what we want is a dishwasher. So a dishwasher is going to be going in on this left side here. So this drawer and door are going to go away. Um, part of this process of what I was doing here is because this dishwasher is going in, we're losing quite a bit of storage space here. So I was trying to fit as much storage into every little nook and cranny of this kitchen as I could. And uh, let's see how we get did here. So this is what was in the cabinets to start with. So I really don't like this kind of cabinet because in order to be able to see in here, you have to get down on your hands and knees and look down in there. And I have a bad back. So anytime I have to bend over and get cleared down to the floor, I really don't like it. So I wanted to come up with some way of being able to access this area that was a little bit easier on the back and uh, made it so things didn't get lost at the back of the cabinets. So I was looking at uh, putting in some drawers. So I used uh, Photoshop here and uh, I considered putting in two drawers and I thought, well, maybe I ought to do three drawers. So I was wondering how that might look. So that was what it looked like. I ended up settling on the two drawers you'll see in a bit here. So now we've uh, gone through a little bit of demolition here, tore out uh, the cabinet, the lower base is out. This is where the dishwasher is gonna go. This is gonna be a compact dishwasher. It's only 18 inches wide because I, if, in order to get a full size one in here, I would have had to rebuild this whole right side and uh, none of the drawers would have been able to be used. This drawer is being reused and the one that was up on this side is gonna get used down here in the lower position. So this is where I was sizing up. How deep does that drawer need to be? Because I, I had this idea, and I can't really say it was my idea. I don't remember where I saw it. But I wanted to be able to store the pots and pans on edge in a drawer with some dividers. So I was looking at this is, there was one pan that was wider than this one, but it was quite a bit wider. And I didn't want to have to make the drawer big enough to just accommodate that one pan. So this is actually the second largest diameter pan that we had. So that became the basis for how deep the first drawer will be. And uh, just looking at the uh, existing condition, you can see this is where the dishwasher is going to slide in. And there's a set of drawers that come out the backside of these cabinets. So there's no lazy Susan in here. You just walk around the backside of the cabinet. And we kept stuff in there that you didn't need access to all the time. There was cookbooks and uh, dish towels and uh, this bottom drawer actually had Play-Doh in it and some other stuff for the kids. This drawer opened really hard and I was able to find out why after this. If you see up here, this guide that holds the back of the drawer straight, see how it's up off of this drawer? Well, this one had come loose from this back support and was resting right on the drawer. So that kind of explained what was going on there. So another thing I would need to fix, and this is looking at the back wall. And another thing to note is this part of the kitchen is cantilevered over the foundation a good 18 inches. So underneath the floor right here is not basement, it's the outdoors. So this part of the kitchen not only is this wall to wall to the exterior, the floor is the floor to the exterior. So these cabinets used to get really cold. And in fact, we learned when the when pipes froze, they didn't freeze enough to break, thank God. But uh, if the temperature went below zero outside, we learned that you had to leave this cabinet door on this side. This one's off right now. But if you left that cabinet door open, 
then enough heat could get underneath of the counter here to keep the pipes for the kitchen sink from freezing. So I, I was, you'll see I insulate this wall better and that problem got solved. As always, we start with a drawing here. And uh, what I'm planning on doing, if we go back to here, in this area here, you can see the sink is over here. And this drain came down a little bit lower than what I needed. But I wanted to be able to access this corner area, which had stuff in it that we basically never used because you couldn't really get into here. But that space was there. So my idea was, if I had a couple of long drawers there, for one, you could set stuff right here on these two shelves just by opening the door. And then you just quickly pull the uh, garbage can out and then these would slide out far enough that you could reach what was in the back. But you know, by pulling it this way, then you only have to reach to the back of the cabinet rather than clear into the corner. And I, I was considering having some kind of a flapper here. That's what this is. That would, if, if you carelessly threw something in the garbage can, it wouldn't end up on that shelf. But I didn't do that. It didn't seem like it was really necessary. So here again is the existing condition with this pipe coming clear down here, which makes sense because the garbage disposal port comes out in this direction. So come down and meet it and go out. But that's not going to cut it for me. So I kept this up here real tight and came over and then came over this way and then they came down and went out. And also, if you look in this picture, there's a hole here in the floor. I moved the hot water pipe from here over to the other side here. And then there's a flex hose that goes over and, and hooks into the faucet. So now the uh, limiting factor is this drain up here and where the drain pipe comes out of the wall. So there's one drawer. This drawer actually did buy at the Habitat for Humanity Restore. It fit in there real nice. Technically, the dovetails are on in the wrong, the wrong direction because you pull this way in this arrangement, whereas this drawer was made for a cabinet that would have been pulled to the left. But I didn't think it was going to get slammed too much under there, so it would probably be okay. Here is, this is that uh, back side of the drawers that uh, come out behind the, uh, beside the dishwasher. And uh, I decided to put uh, runners, bear, ball bearing runners on that bottom drawer. I think part of the reason why that drawer had failed the way it did is because this drawer gets, had gotten closed with somebody's foot on a regular basis. And that's a lot stronger and not as uh, sensitive to what's going on there. So that, I think, is why that piece got broken off there. So in an effort to keep the water pipes from freezing, I have put a piece of foam insulation on the wall here. And then uh, I mentioned in an earlier video that there was a, a built-in oven on the wall, and the stovetop was separate, and it was built into the countertop. And this is real heavy gauge, it's like six gauge wire that was had come out of the wall and then was uh, ran across the inside of the cabinet and powered that electric stovetop. So what I did is uh, I, I needed power for, we had a window air conditioner in this kitchen for a while that ran on 220 volts. So I, I came, this is where it came out of the wall. I went over here, jumping one stud, went back into the wall, and then I came up and had an outlet for the window air conditioner we had that we cooled our house with for a while. So that's what that is. I mean, not the best looking, but I mean, look where it is. You never see it. So here I'm getting the, the cabinet boxed in for the dishwasher. And I was very concerned about providing as much sound deadening insulation in here as I could so that the dishwasher wouldn't be too loud for us. This is a pretty small house. The ground floor was 850 square feet. So uh, we were very close family because we barely could get out of each other's sight. So it was, it was actually nice. I highly recommend it for a young family. So now you can see I have, I've got insulation on the back wall behind the uh, 
dishwasher and I put another layer on the wall here beside the drawers so that that's now covering up that wire that was going across the wall. So it's bridging that gap there. And now you can see I've repaired this rail that uh, helped support this second to the bottom drawer here, screw in the back, and there's ball bearing drawer slides on this bottom one here. This drawer here actually had taken quite a beating and had a whole bunch of nails trying to hold the front um, the front piece on because it had apparently broken off several times. So I ended up cutting it down and uh, putting a dovetail joinery in on that one. So not every drawer got rebuilt in that way with the dovetail joinery, but any one that I built new had dovetails on it. Uh, this is actually, this is a drawer. This is the one that came out where the uh, silverware goes. And my dad had built this one for us because it was falling apart when we moved in and he did the dovetail joinery on it with that same dovetail jig that I have I borrowed from him. Now, in an effort to use every nook and cranny of storage space in this kitchen, I noticed this dead space back in the corner here. And you can't get a drawer in there. You really can't access it well from underneath. So I decided that I would put a, there's a, a wall here, and this helps keep the drawer straight. And then, it's kind of jumping ahead. I put I put a screw into the top so that there was a pivot point on this board here. And here's the blocks I added to the underside of the cabinet. And then there's one screw coming up here. So the back part of this, this board goes in as the front part pulls out. So there you can see it's closed. And then I built a box in there. And uh, I'll admit this isn't some of my best craftsmanship, but look where it is. This absolutely never gets seen at all. But I put a little floor in here and uh, a board up here. So now there's a shelf in there. So when you push at the back here, since the pivot point is about three inches up from the back, that causes this to come out here. Once that comes out a little ways, then you can grab hold of this with your fingers. And now look at, there is a storage space in here. And of course, you have to remove the silverware drawer to get to this. So this isn't an everyday storage space. So here now I'm pulling on that and it comes open. And I think this is the wire for the garbage disposal, which I had added years earlier. But here is a secret storage space. So this is where we kept my wife's mother's silver. So this is our silverware, and I mean silver. So if our house had ever gotten broken into and we were not in the best of neighborhoods, uh, hopefully the thieves wouldn't find this. I remember my folks' house got broken into, and, and that was one of the things that was stolen was the silver. Luckily, our house never did get broken into, so this didn't get tested. Um, that's an incredible violation if you've ever had to experience that. So there it goes. The silver's in there, and that goes shut. Uh, this is those drawers I was talking about that were behind or kind of beside the dishwasher. Um, and this is the board that's going to have the ball bearing drawer slides mounted on it. And this is the guide that I had to repair. So it's already repaired in this picture because we can see the insulation on the back side. And, and that insulation there is an effort to try to keep the sound muffled and contained in that small box where the dishwasher is. Here's a good look here. One thing of note was the shelf beside these drawers was open across here. So I don't recall anything ever falling off of the shelf or, or interfering with the drawers there, but it could have gone that way. So there's the back side again. I think that picture is a duplicate. And here's the 
Here's the ball bearing drawer guides. And then you can see the dovetail joinery I put on that drawer. And this does look like what usually got stored in here was uh, things for baking. Now here's that drawer that uh, I had measured up earlier with the pan on its edge. And I've got full extension ball bearing drawer guides on here. So the, it comes all the way out. The back is completely out in front of the cabinets. And this is, this is a super long set of dovetail joints. So you could slam that thing all day, every day, and this is not going to come off of here. And now we're also seeing these two drawers here that I worked out. And this one is easy access, you know, things that got used regular got set right on here. And the same with this area here and other things. And I always like to say the, uh, the crock pot is something that we didn't use all the time. That would be sitting back in here a little ways. You grab a garbage can, set it off to the side, and those will slide out there. See how far they come out. Now you can reach in right behind here, whatever you got in here. This upper one, the space to reach in there was a little tight. That I wasn't super thrilled with how that turned out, but if you look over here, you see I had to come above the pipe going into the wall. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to slide it out as far. I probably gained another three or four inches because it's, it's now hitting this vertical pipe right here. Also, there, there was a little bit of interference with this pipe up here. You had to be careful of how tall a thing you put on this drawer here. But it's just one idea how to use that space back in a corner. This got me got a little more useful space out here. And also in this picture, this drawer here is the one that was on top just off screen here to the left. So this is the silverware drawer. This one was over to the left. Now it's down below here. They were the same width. So that was nice. So I did get to reuse that drawer. So that was one less drawer I had to make. This is kind of a crazy shot. I put the camera in that cabinet right beside the plumbing and I'm looking out from there. So here's the drawer that hasn't been made yet, or the opening for the drawer that hasn't been made yet. Now, this is actually a test. This white stuff down here, that's that ACM, the aluminum composite material that I've used earlier. And I was trying to figure out could I make grooves in it and then have some kind of divider? This is a real thin piece of plywood uh, that slid into these grooves. And how would that look? So you can see I've got a couple of dividers in here. And what I wanted to be able to do is open this drawer, reach in, grab hold of the pan I want, no matter which one it is, and pull it out without moving anything else. Whenever I see pots and pans nested on a shelf somewhere, we'll try to sneak one of those out of the middle at six o'clock in the morning because you'd like to have eggs for breakfast and everybody's sleeping and you're in a small house. You can't do it. It makes a racket, especially the lids. So that was the goal. Open the drawer, pull out the one you want without moving anything else. So this looked like it's going to work, but I, I didn't like the wood idea. I wanted that to be this ACM too. Also, the back side of the ACM, all of it was white, and the front side was, you know, a bunch of different colors. And I had some silver and, you know, several other colors. Another thing I learned from this test was that these fit in here super tight. And when you were shoving them down, I mean, the more friction you had, you could barely get them down in here. So in the version that I ended up remaking, I made the bottom of this a little bit narrower than the top. So these grooves going down were actually kind of a V, a real wide V. So they were fairly loose when you had the, the divider up at the top. And then as you pushed it down, it got tighter and tighter. And that worked out really well. So you can see there's also the lids go in there. So you'll keep them nice and tight where the lids are. And 
there's three lids in here and I would say you could pull those out without disturbing the other ones very much. In order to get that full extension in here, I had to route out a little bit of the uh, rabbit on the front of the uh, drawer so I could get the, the longest drawer glide that I could find I put in there. Here is the shelf, or I'm sorry, this is a drawer that's going to fill in that small space that was the remainder after the large drawer and the one that I reused. So there it is. This has got good dovetail joinery on it. So it kind of looks like that uh, um, Photoshop picture at the very beginning where I was sizing up how are these drawers going to look. So now I've got the two drawers into the corner here. Um, I've got the drawers that go out the back side here repaired and uh, the ball bearing drawer glides on the bottom. Got all these drawers made and now here is the gap that I've left for the dishwasher. So now the, the insulation is getting put in here. This did another thing besides insulating the wall and sound deadening. By putting a wall here and one here and one here, it it broke up this set of cabinets in with like bulkheads across here. So instead of that exterior wall and floor having all this area to collect cold and then distribute it around the corner to where the plumbing was, the only place that plumbing had the cold wall was just this one small section over here. So that that also made it so this countertop, I'm not kidding you, on a zero degree day, you got up in the morning, if you laid your arms on that kitchen counter, it was ice cold. I'll bet if you laid a pound of hamburger on that counter in the morning, it would not thaw out by uh, after work. It was, it would be just freezing cold. I mean, you didn't even want to lean against it. The things were so cold. Um, this is a picture I took because I just wanted to show that I used every little cut off and little nook and cranny piece of that foam insulation that I had left over. So I stuck it in the corners there just to beef up the insulation a little bit. And there's the dishwasher and I'm trying to size up. How is this going to fit in here? This is a nice little dishwasher total stainless steel interior. Here's the electrical coming up from the floor. And uh, installing a dishwasher in a, an existing kitchen for the first time is a lot different than replacing a dishwasher. This, there was no electrical, there was no supply for the hot water, there was no drain. So all of those things had to be accommodated. So you saw that's the electric conduit coming up. This is what the drain pipe looks like. And uh, at this point, I don't have a supply of hot water. The other thing was, is uh, you saw earlier, the cabinet's a little bit wider than what's really needed. Plus, there is this little notch up here at the top that needed to be filled in. And again, since I'm painting these cabinets, these screw holes for the door that used to be there will get filled. So that's very forgiving. So I... I put in a pretty large piece of wood in here. I just thought it would be easier to attach the dishwasher to it. That was pretty beefy. This gets us out to the right width of an opening for the dishwasher. And it's hard to see, but I've got a little piece of wood in that notch that was in there. And then I thought this was fairly ingenious. I put this block of wood down here and put this out here and put the pipe clamp on it so that this new piece was pushed up tight to the uh, bottom of the existing cabinet. So I've got a nice tight fit there. So there it is with the new board on the side. It's, I thought it was better to keep the dishwasher out of the corner because when you open this door up, I didn't want it possibly interfering with the handle on the cabinet right next to it as the door swung down. So I'm making some good progress here. You can see it kind of looks wet in here. That is a sanding sealer. Everything has been sanded and now any place there was bare wood, I have painted with the sanding sealer. And 
yeah, this is as many drawers as it looks like. This is drawers and doors, and uh, it was a lot. And each time I went to put a coat of paint on these things, on all these drawers, inside and out, it took me two and a half hours from start to finish. And there's uh, there's one or two coats of sanding sealer and at least two coats of uh, blue paint on every piece of this. So it was quite time consuming. It was uh, a real marathon. This, of course, is the sanding sealer coat. As you can see, it's kind of it's more of a clear coat. And there they are. And now we're getting some color on here. And uh, I thought this color, I mean, this was, actually, I think this was in the 90s we did this. But the uh, television show, Last Man Standing, is on recently. And it, uh, they have their kitchen painted this same color. So this color of kitchen has, uh, has lasted, you know, it's, it's not out of style yet. I'm sure it will be someday. So the underside is all painted here. Of course, it's always a lot of blue. And most of this wouldn't get seen, but I painted it anyway. There's the set of drawers that are going to be there. Drawers are so much better than doors. There's the backside drawers. Now here, this is my son, Tony, and uh, he was my torch man for this job here. This is the new supply pipe that's going to supply hot water to this dishwasher. And what we're doing here is we're sweating a shutoff valve in here. So in case we have to do maintenance to the dishwasher, we have a place to shut off the water here. So and then that's there's a T down there. That's where we're going to T into the existing plumbing. And uh, we had a lot of fun with this. And this is, uh, oh, what do you call this thing? A trap. This is a trap that was in the basement for the washing machine. And this kitchen is right over top of our laundry room. So I decided rather than try to take the drain hose and go through the backside of the cabinet with the drawers in it and then around the corner where the two drawers in the corner are and then go into the garbage disposal, which is the classic way to dispose of water from a dishwasher. I was just going to go down through the floor and then I could hook right into this drain pipe here. So of course, this was put in probably in 56. And when I tried undoing this, it broke. And you can see that pipe wrench has got a bend in it now. That's because I had this pipe on the end of that wrench and then we were jumping up and down on top of it trying to unscrew that thing and it finally just broke so here's a picture of the ceiling right under the dishwasher and here you can also see how the kitchen is cantilevered over the foundation of the house it goes out another 18 inches here so here's where we cut the existing hot water line and that's the t and then it goes up and then it goes across here. It's supported right there. And there's the shutoff valve. Then I got a flex hose here and uh, put some pipe insulation on it because we're getting out into that overhung place. So I didn't want that pipe to freeze underneath there. I also reworked the insulation here so that air could get in along the underside of the floor, whereas the way it was when we moved in, it had just been cram packed full of insulation, which is a little bit counterintuitive, but it keeps the floor warmer. Now, the dishwasher is right here. So what I did have to do is I drilled a hole under those drawers that were to the left of the dishwasher. And so that takes me over here and gets me on the other side of this wall here and gets me into the laundry room. So here's that pipe coming through the floor here. It comes down. And then since I broke that trap off, I had to put a new one on here. So I did it in PVC. And this used to just come up and stop right here. And that's what I was trying to hit. But since I had to redo this, I decided to put this Y in here. And then this goes off to the side and goes over and reaches where the hose was for the um, washing machine a little closer. 
So I like the way that worked out real well. And then this continues to go up and then it reaches that other flex hose. This is the discharge, that gray pipe right there. I don't know if I got a better picture of it. Nope. That's the discharge coming down from the dishwasher. So it comes right down here as a trap and gets uh, drained out. So now it's looking like it's installed here. And like I said before, it's got a nice stainless steel inside. And uh, yeah, it's a small dishwasher. And uh, we had a family of five. And most days we ran it, you know, it was, it was full whenever we ran it. And on the weekends, since we were all home, if we had to run it twice, that's no big deal. It's small. So it, uh, it worked out really well. Now, as it turned out, I had it installed incorrectly the whole time we were there until we went to move out. And then I was concerned on how it was working. And I did some more research and I found out that by draining it straight, it actually, it, the drain hose goes underneath these drawers and then goes through the floor. The thing was never able to hold water so that when it was pumping, it wasn't pumping any water. So what is important with a dishwasher is the hose has to come up and go clear up to the underside of the counter and then go to the drain. And that loop holds the water in the dishwasher until the pump pumps it out. The way I had it, just running across the floor and going down, as it was trying to fill, it was draining right out. There's no shutoff valve on the drain side. You did not know that. So whoever moved in there got probably a way better operating dishwasher than we ever used. So, you know, we didn't really get a good test on it because I didn't know that fact about dishwashers. As far as size goes, so really all our dishes ever got, only time they got water splashed on them was during the rinse cycles. I know, it's pretty disappointing. So there it is in there. And uh, I did the ACM on the underside of the cabinets. It's such a clean look. And uh, by uh, using the table saw and cutting off the bottom layer of the aluminum and most of the plastic, then you could hammer the edge of the top piece of aluminum over and you get this nice, smooth, rounded edge exposed. So that made for wiping off the underside of the cabinets real easy. Also, if we ever developed a small drip or leak underneath of the cabinets, it would fall on this aluminum stuff and then hopefully we'd see it before uh, it got to be too big or started really rotting out the cabinets or even the floor underneath. Um, under dishwashers is real, a real famous place for floors to get rotted out. So now those are closed. You can't tell what's going on inside there. Now I've custom built a new baseboard to go underneath. I raised this up. You might have noticed in the first picture of the dishwasher, there was a rail on top of the dishwasher right here. And again, because of my bad back, I decided I'm not having that. And I cut that out of there just to buy myself an extra inch and a half. So that's why it looks like it's so high off of the floor here. I ended up blocking this up underneath and uh, raised it up to there. And it's just a little bit, but I tell you, when uh, you got a bad back and you're reaching down, every inch helps. So that's a nice piece of plywood. That's actually just jammed in there right now. That picture was taken. And uh, here's how, this is the finished product. Now you can see the ACM has that silver finish on it this time, which looks a lot better. And then I came up with a way of using the ACM for the dividers. And I folded the top edge over on itself and it came over about three quarters of an inch. And then I epoxied it to itself. So you weren't just trying to hang on to the edge of the ACM. It actually had a bit of a lip on it. So your fingers had something to grab hold of. And then, uh, like I said before, I made this a little bit of a V so that those could slide in and out a little bit better. This is not what we kept in here. This is my wife's baking supplies. I just threw those in there quick to show how versatile this could be. You could put that stuff in there. 
it would work uh, real nice. This, you know, you can see these pans in here. You could pull out one at a time. Beautiful. This is probably the thing that I uh, that I would I'd show people our kitchen and the things that I did. This is the place where people would go, "Wow, I want that." And uh, I know at least one guy that uh, specified that in his kitchen when he built a new house that he wanted a drawer similar to this. Okay, now that uh, kick panel is is painted and then it's screwed on. So if I ever need to do any maintenance to the dishwasher, which you always do, there's three screws that you take out and then that panel can come out of there. So there it is, a lot of blue. Looking like an installed dishwasher. Used to be a door right here. Now there's three drawers and the file folder pots and pan drawer is there. One of my favorite things about that kitchen. And that's it. So that's where we are on the kitchen cabinet upgrade. In the next video, we'll be turning our attention to this cabinet off to the left. So for now, thanks for watching my video. Please like and subscribe. Share if you like some of the ideas on this video. You're watching On the Mark with Mark. Thanks.